Hello, and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. Uh, this week at this time, we're going to continue talking about the CAE exam. That is the Cambridge Advanced English exam, uh, which many Europeans um, may have to take for uh, job opportunities. Uh, in any case, this week we're going to be looking at the reading test. Now, it's obviously a Cambridge exam, so many similarities to the IELTS uh, exam uh, in, in this test. <clears throat> the CAE reading exam, parts one and four are quite similar, basically similar in format. Uh, one being maybe a bit easier than part four, but basically what we're looking at and what we're going to look at today are uh, exam question types which involve um, summarizing, but uh, the format is basically mix and match. You have a number of answers that you have to match up with different information. This can be specific information. Um, which you just have to locate or scan for. Uh, it could be uh, information that you have to mm, summarize and find keywords. For example, uh, first example we're going to look at today is a headings type question. Exactly the same thing. Any of you who've taken IELTS, you'd be familiar with this type of question in reading. It's really the same thing. They sometimes vary it to the, the way that IELTS works, uh, but the basic idea is the same. In other words, what you're trying to do is mix and match a title or a heading for each paragraph. We're going to be looking at that first today. Hopefully, as time allows, we'll look at another variation on the mix and match theme. Hello, Max. Hello, Oakley. Hi there. Uh, okay. Well, I know that you are familiar with the IELTS heading <laughs> question. Uh, but, uh, okay, CAE is much the same. Sometimes it's exactly the same, frankly. Sometimes it's got a different twist. Sometimes they, for example, our first example, the headings are like in the form of questions with a keyword. I don't know, maybe it makes it a little easier. Sometimes it's a little harder. For example, if you uh, downloaded the, the worksheet, the second example uh, is much more difficult because you're dealing with not headings but concepts or summary concepts that you're being asked to mix and match uh, with the paragraphs, which I think is a little harder because you don't have actual keywords to look for. You're, you're looking for summarized concepts. That can be a little bit more difficult. There's another variation, which again, hopefully we'll get to, where you're actually looking for specific information, uh, very specific information to answer questions related to the reading. That's actually quite a bit easier. Um, okay, well, let's take a look and get started. I'm going to do a screen share, talk to you about a couple things, and and uh, have you help me practice a couple different things. Uh, first of all, one thing which I highly suggest is that in any of these, in any of the reading, any reading exam, actually, they're always going to have a classic. English organization, you're going to have an introductory paragraph, supporting points, and a concluding paragraph. Uh, all of these tests. First, uh, your first, the first order of business, basically, to, to help yourself out is to get an idea of what the main topic is and what the what is the controlling idea. Um, 
Now here I'm going to I'm going to share with you a paragraph from a leaflet uh, from the Health and Safety Executive in Britain. Okay. So uh, we're going to skim through and try to figure out what is the main theme and what is the controlling idea or who is, in this case, who is this leaf leaflet aimed at. Um, okay. Right off the bat, the first sentence is going to be highly informative towards that goal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Employees should consider how to limit passive smoking at work. In fact, maybe you can figure out the answer to this question. <laughs> these questions, the main theme, and who it's aimed yeah. at immediately. Yeah. This main theme. Theme is... Uh, theme, yeah. Huh. Theme? Theme, yeah, long E, so. Theme, theme, okay, theme. Yeah, passive smoking, to smoking. limit, limiting, limiting passive smoking at workplace is the main theme of this topic, I'm sure, without okay. any shadow of the dot. <laughs> shadow of a doubt. With, of without, a doubt. Without yeah. shadow of a doubt. It's a shadow, a shadow of a doubt. A shadow of a doubt. Yeah. The idiomatic expression. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And uh, who, do, who is the government printing this little leaflet for? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> um, who, yeah, this, this is a this is some kind of government agency. I don't know. I don't. I'm not British, but I, I think it is some government or quasi-government organization. I'm assuming there. I don't really know. Um, in any case, who are they printing this leaflet for? You're right, the idea of limiting uh, passage. Who okay. printed this? Who created this? Uh, maybe who who doesn't smoke and are not, who isn't smoking? No, 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 no. Who is it for? Who is supposed to read this, in other words? Employer? Employee? And employer? <laughs> Probably employer. Yeah. Um, Okay, it talks about creating policy, uh, policy, 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 uh, uh, how policies are accepted by employees. Uh, how they can follow this policy. Yeah, how to, exactly how to implement or how they can follow the policy, uh, how they can be worked out and agreed upon between managers and employees. Uh, sure. So I think this is for businesses, employers, advice for employers. Uh, okay, headings, the infamous headings questions. Uh, okay, in this case, our headings are labeled uh, alphabetically, A through H. Uh, okay, now, depending, now, in IELTS, this is fairly easy. A good strategy to use is look at the reading, skim each paragraph, and imagine, uh, find a, a keyword that would be in the heading or the title. Here they're asking you to check the headings first. Um, at, just as in IELTS, this is good advice right here. Uh, you, you don't normally find exactly the same word in both the heading and the paragraph. Too true. This is an extremely important point. But the content will be similar or you're talking about synonyms. Um, synonymous keywords is usually what you're looking at. Even uh, if I find the same words, I feel like it's set up. For me, <laughs> it's a setup. It's a trick. It's a yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is where, frankly, in any of these exams, this is why you have to practice a lot, so you can learn and recognize the setups. <laughs> You're exactly right. It's 
you're exactly right. The, part of your strategy for exam preparation in any of these, it's not it's not even about knowing English and English organization and how English works. It's more like learning how they try to trick you <laughs> and being very familiar with their devious little tricks. Uh, okay, fine. We can quickly look at these headings. Now, this is a little different than, than an IELTS exam would be because they're giving you headings that are like in a question form. Uh, okay, in each paragraph, now this is the same thing I recommend for IELTS, underline the word, phrase, or sentence which helps you choose the correct heading, or even better, uh, summarize in your own brain using the keyword or keyword phrase, what is this paragraph. Uh, okay, in this case our answers are here first. Uh, all right, you can see actually, it's actually a little easier than IELTS because they're providing you really decent keywords. Um, for example, uh, hi, hi Aretheli, before I... Hi. You. Hi, welcome. How are you? Uh, some of these seem to be slightly easier. Now in an IELTS exam, there's usually each heading is two words, often an adjective and a noun, always a noun, or a verb and a noun, running, running Indians or something like that, or passive Indians. I, I don't know, I'm just making up those words, but IELTS is fairly consistent in how they do these headings questions. CAE does these types of questions in diff several different ways, actually. In this case, we have questions, and it might be kind of easy to pick out uh, important keywords here. Aretheli, for example, what might be a keyword here? Mm, uh, sorry, I don't know because I didn't, I didn't listen to the, to the reading, so I don't know. Uh, but, okay, now normally we're, I would suggest looking at the reading first, then trying to choose the appropriate heading and making notes, but uh, I'm just making a quick point before we do that, that the, even these types of headings have very obvious keywords, or to me, very obvious. Um, for example, A, passive, or phrase, passive smoking, mm -hmm. uh, danger, uh, respiratory diseases. Uh, benefits, I just saying uh, prohibit smoking, evidence, I think the, the keywords are a lot easier to find than they are in, in IELTS, I think. Okay, anyway, great, looking at the, uh, our first one, first of all, they're going to give you, uh, just as they do in IELTS, they give you an example, or I think they do, uh, Aretheli? Do they give you one of the paragraphs as an example? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I'm not sure for the for the reading, but, but usually they give you an example of every question. Every part right. has a, uh, an example of it. Right. So if if they do that, you can quickly eliminate uh, G here. And by the way, in all of these reading test. The more answers you can eliminate, and I mean actually physically eliminate, take your pencil or writing utensil or whatever and physically cross them out so you can't see them anymore. For some reason this very act in and of itself makes it a lot easier to find answers. The less things you're looking at, the less your brain has to do and can focus a little better. So they give an example why be concerned about smoking at work for the first paragraph? Actually, if I already have this paragraph eliminated and I know the answer, I would completely cross this out for starters. Goodbye. See you later. And I would also, I wouldn't even, because you're worried about time, I wouldn't even bother to read this paragraph. What is the point? Um, I've already answered the question about it. Don't really need to. Uh, 
the point there being that the, any way you can conserve time and save yourself time, you should take advantage of it. Don't waste time. Absolutely. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Uh, quickly, hello, Nader. Hi there. Hi. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Max, starting with this paragraph, which is the second paragraph. All right. To read scan this or what? down. No, don't bother. Scan down and see if you can. Uh, <laughs> don't bother. This is this is called passive smoking. Ah. <laughs> being uh, being operative words. <laughs> Being the operative word, very nice. Exactly. Being the operative word. You're exactly right. Oh, very good. Uh, you're absolutely correct. All right. We discussed the operative word in an earlier class. Right. Um, there will be an operative word. Perfect. Yeah, uh, okay. There you go. This is called passive smoking. All right. So perhaps you underline that or do something uh, so that so that you can easily find the answer. Now, of course, your strategy may be different, but the idea of finding that keyword, key phrase, key sentence is extremely important. You can go down and look at, do all the paragraphs first, and then look at the possible answers. Um, or you can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. My advice is just um, whatever's faster for you. You want to practice, and actually another thing I suggest is when you practice for any of these exams, don't start with a specific strategy and just do that, and don't lock yourself in. Try two or three, four different strategies and see which one works best for you. Um, try some different things. Play around a little bit while you're just doing practice. So, uh, all right, this is called passive smoking. Because we're in a class and people might have to come and go, I'm going to go back and forth today. I, personally, if I was taking the test, I would not do this, but just because we're in a class. So, Max, there you go. This is called passive smoking. Uh, <laughs> so, do you know the answer already, for the, the probable answer here? Max, are you there? Okay. What happened to him? Okay. Ar Arithali? Um, uh, for the paragraph you have just read, the, yeah. the question would be, A, what is passive smoking? Yeah, I would say that is uh, definitely probably the answer. Boom, let's get rid of it. Okay, <laughs> whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, I meant to do this. Yeah, that's it. Cross it out. I think it's quite obvious. I have a high degree of confidence. Now, it may happen that you do not have a high degree of confidence, um, in which case you want to just write a question mark, and maybe you have a choice between two of the possible answers. Put a question mark, um, well, with the, the number of the, okay, paragraph two, um, question mark next to a couple answers and hopefully you'll be able to eliminate one of the other answers thus finding the answer by default. Uh, okay. Um, -dum. Okay. Quickly scanning this paragraph. Nader. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, what phrase or keyword or possibly even a sentence, if the sentence like last time, uh, like Max's sentence, notice it was a very short sentence. You don't want a lot of extra detail. So what, um, Nader, what, what do you think? Is, it, is there a keyword or a couple of words or phrase? that strikes you as being the most important part of this paragraph. Um, by the way, looking at this paragraph, 
if I see something like this beginning, in some situations uh, I know that this is not really going to be the answer because I know it's going to be followed with a but, a however, on the other hand, or some sort of uh, signal word or signal phrase which, which will make the point. Nate Eric, do you see anything here that seems like the main point uh, or part? Oh, Nate Eric's not here. Max, are you here? <laughs> maybe, maybe control passive smoking. Oh, Google Chat. Oh, okay, well, that's. <laughs> He's using Google Chat, which I can't see because I have to. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, hang on. Control of passive smoking. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, okay. Cont all right. Oh, there it is. Control of passive smoking. Uh, uh, okay. Possibly. Uh, Aratheli, do you agree? Do you have another idea? I think uh, the paragraph is about uh, agreement in control of passive smoking between workers and uh, management. So it's like how to implement this policy. Okay, maybe more like smokers and problems in enforcing. Uh, okay, well, let's take a look. Uh, all right, we've gotten rid of A. Never mind A. Uh, okay, H. I can. I don't need to look at that. All right, so. Uh, all right, is there anything Aratheli close to that? Mm, not really. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, D. Benefits. Is there closer? Uh, to employees, okay. Well, let's. This is sent. This is paragraph three. Uh, I'll give you a question mark there. Hmm. Um, hmm. But none of the the rest of the of the headings don't match better on this. So I will do that. Put a question mark and go on with it. Okay. Uh, Nate Air, do you, uh, you or or Max, do you guys have any other different ideas? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Which one answers the question? Uh, okay. Maybe C. Oh no 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 C. Uh, above. Uh, B. How can B? Yeah. Uh, no. All right. In this question format, rem remember the question will be answered by the paragraph. All right. So which question could you uh. ask and have somebody to say, so have somebody answer it? Yeah. Okay. E, well, maybe. I'm thinking E. Uh, would it be better to totally prohibit smoking at work? A person may answer. In some situations, a complete ban is justified. But elsewhere, the imposition of blah, blah, blah may okay. cause problems. See how that the answer matches mm -hmm. the question, right? Yes. Yeah. If All it's right. better, if I it's a think, point. I think so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Bye, E. Uh, okay. Let's look at the next one. Uh, ta -da, uh, okay, just to make it easier to see the whole thing, let me let me move it down here. Okay, here we go. Hum, da -dum -dum. Uh, okay, Max, uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, I see word hazard. I don't know what is it, but uh, I'll. I watched this in answer H. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there's, there's something you saw which you remember from H. All right, well, okay, fine. 
nothing wrong with going back and forth between your questions and your and your reading material. In fact, you're going to do that inevitably. Uh, Save the alarm from smoking at work okay. and help risk for smokers. Okay. Yeah. What about it? I yeah. I usually go in to read where I see this word and try to figure out um, this or not. Right. And then to hell hazard. And I, I, I sh I'm sure the answer is H. Sure, you're right. The funny part about this is that the paragraph describes how uh, we're not going to talk about this. <laughs> What about? Okay, you're right. H says, what about these things? And the answer in the paragraph is, uh, you, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> you're absolutely correct. And it does, as you noted, it does include some very specific, very specific um, uh, keywords, key phrases. Frankly, also, when you're dealing with keywords and key phrases, looking for compound nouns or compound uh, set phrases in English they use a lot in in these exercises to uh, they use a lot of set phrases um, two words that go together or collocations very strong health risks very strong collocations um, to help you indicate the answer all right I think that quite specifically answers that question. What about them? Well, we're not going to talk about them. That's what. That's what about them. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, whatever method you use, scanning the questions and then the reading, scanning the reading all, and then looking to the questions or going back and forth, regardless, the more things you can cross out, the faster you're going to go. Aretheli, what do you think? What's the important part of this paragraph, do you think? Um, a smoking is a major cause of disease. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. All right. Is there anything? Here, uh, hmm, this might be a tough mm. one. Maybe B. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How can it be dangerous to your health? Uh, okay. Um, That's it. We only have four answers. Or what is the evidence? I think it's B. If it mm. fits better, maybe they talk about the evidence later on. The text. Uh, I would go on <laughs> reading and I possibly be, but I'm not sure about okay. F. Which one, two, three, four, this is five. Yeah, I, I'm not sure myself. So we'll give that a wait a minute. Wait and see. Let's, let's wait and see. It's got to be one or the other, though. That we're sure of, right? I mean, it's got to be, right? All right, this is okay. This is no oh, I see. cause for alarm. What's that? In the, on the next paragraph, they are talking about evidence, I think. So uh, I would say B on uh, ah, S for the studies. next paragraph. <laughs> ah, okay. Scientific studies, research, reports. Uh, the findings are consistent. We got numbers here. There being a small increase in the risk of lung cancer from exposure. Uh, okay. Yeah, that would seem to be. That would seem to be evidence. Evidence, numbers, proof. Uh, okay. So that's that one's the evidence. You think that one's number six? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. six, yeah. six, it's F and B, five. All right. Well, I hope that works out for everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. 
Let's say it does. Uh, all right, great. Now we've only got two answers. Terrific. We're smoking along here. We're we're smoking. <laughs> we're doing great. Uh, okay. Uh, Nader, looking at the next one. What is the main idea? Now, here's another thing. Regard again, regardless of your your technique, go through all the paragraphs first and then look at the answers going back and forth. Um, whatever you're doing, when you get down to the last couple answers, last couple paragraphs, definitely it's a good idea to check out the answers. Um, okay, respiratory diseases and benefits to employees. Hmm. Uh, okay. It might be easier to quickly recognize the point. Uh, okay. Where uh, are you answering this question now? E F. Wait a minute. I think the word is uh, uh, who who already have. Okay. Where are we? Uh, um, make myself no. lost. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Um, who already have? Oh, look. Ah, okay. All right. All right. Who already have? And um, uh, okay, that seems to match quite directly. And so, does this last paragraph? fit the question what are the benefits to employers and employees whatever and I have to mention that yes. it's more easier than real IELTS test yeah I think it is <laughs> I I agree well see the whole thing with CAE some in parts one and parts four some of them are definitely easier than IELTS uh, headings questions, but some of them are kind of harder. Um, I want to show you, okay, we've done this, we figured this out. Uh, okay, it's it's fairly easy. I'm going to show you another kind of style, but first I'm going to bounce out and show you an even easier one, or my opinion. Uh, hang on. <coughs> Uh, I want to show you one, um, I'm going to screen share, I didn't have this as part of the prepared material, I couldn't really do it, but uh, I just want to show you this one real quick, another one that might be closer to part one, hang on a sec, uh, another style, because I, I want, to, want you to be able to see the different styles of these mix and match questions. They're all basically the same, but okay. Here's another one: um, multiple matching. Uh, okay. All right. The events A to J are among the events featured in the task. Text. Read the questions one to one to twelve. And uh, okay. So over here, here's our answers. Over here. What is this? This refers to this. Um, basically, first task is to recognize uh, what is this? Um, what is this thing? Okay, opera and concerts, blah blah, cinema, the theater, dance, rock, jazz. All right, what is this thing I'm looking at here? Uh, Arathali, what, what is this thing? What is the reading? What is the point? Mm. Uh, it, it looks like a guide uh, for music, and so you, you can choose what are you interested in. Like uh, well, for music or for everything, for leisure time. Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's an entertainment mm -hmm. guide, most certainly. Okay, so that's what we're looking at in the answers. All right, the first step is to recognize what you're looking at. An entertainment guide 
the answers are the individual um, mm, uh, the titles of the actual events uh, or who's doing them. All right. Leonardo National Ballet of St. Petersburg, blah, blah, blah. Uh, some of them may be places. Okay. In other words, the answers are very concrete things. You can't change them, all right? Um, the National Ballet of St. Petersburg does not have a synonym. <laughs> it's the name of something. So, uh, obviously, this is going to be easier, or for me, it's obviously easier, because you're looking for very specific information. Names and places don't have synonyms. So, you don't have to worry about strangely worded text or phrases that mean the same. It's just scanning. Uh, that's exactly right, Nate Eric. Um, some of it's very obvious. Uh, the first few answers here uh, are direct scanning. Uh, okay, you just have to know what to scan for. All right. Let's just real quickly here. Um, Max, what are you going to scan for in this question? Uh, notice, by, oh, by the way. Of course, Oxford. Of course, Oxford. Notice, by the way, uh, events. Frequently, unlike uh, IELTS, in CAE, you will have some questions with multiple answers. There's two answers. Actually, I've noticed that they do this a lot. They, this never happens in IELTS. This does happen, so be aware of plurals and and multiple answer questions. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously Oxford. Uh, okay, blah blah blah. Where do you see Oxford? Oh, Oxford. Oh, look, that wasn't too hard. Okay, and it's something about this Leonardo thing. Song and dance version of Leonardo da Vinci's life. <laughs> wow, I'd love to see that. How crazy. I'm going to paint the Mona Lisa. Here I go. Okay, crazy. Uh, all right. There's one. Uh, where's another one? Who can find it before me? I'm just going to scroll down the page. Another one for Oxford. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh, oh I, where is it? Uh, uh, A anybody see it? National Valley of St. Petersburg. There it is, Oxford. Excellent. Uh, okay, bingity bangity boom. That's fairly easy. Uh, scan for the word, find the word. Uh, here's the National. Ballet of St. Petersburg and uh, Leonardo. I will now design a helicopter. Here I go. I'm a hell of a feller. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I and C, not J. Um, okay, anyway, that's pretty obviously a lot easier um, to do. But notice even in this example, uh, Okay, we're going to have some uh, different things here going on. Okay, where maybe we can't directly find the answer by scanning for a particular word. For example, uh, number six here, or yes, this number six. Which film is showing with another by the same director? Uh, okay, to scan for this, uh, What are we going to look for here? Where are we going to look? In what area? I think it's fairly obvious. We're going to look in cinema, film, cinema. In there, that case, you would have to know the film and cinema are the same thing. Yes, Aretheli, uh it's easy to make simple and stupid mistakes where you actually know the answer, but you fill in the blank incorrectly. Yes, it's very easy to make those kinds of mistakes. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Nadir, yeah, what is what is the point of just t testing scanning ability? Well, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but all of these tests do it. TOEFL, IELTS, CAE, they all do it, but they will um, give you some scan questions, and then they'll mix in some summary questions, and they'll mix in some comprehension questions. Uh, to add pressure to you so that you're freaking out and sweating profusely because scanning will take time. Also, you're scanning so that you understand the organization, so you know where to look in a piece of writing, how to find information quickly, how English is organized. In this case, how it's organized in almost a commercial sense. Uh, other cases, how it's organized in a, an academic essay or um, scientific or even even maybe uh, business related, like our last example. Uh, nope, uh, we didn't, and that's, that's obviously very simple to find Oxford. Just the fact that you know how to do that, though, how to scan very quickly for information. Uh, okay, but anyway, uh, which film is shown? Then you have to know English. You have to understand that cinema is film. Uh, okay, you also the, you may be asked to scan for a word that's not in here, so you have to know synonyms. Okay, take a look at this one. What what are you going to scan for in this question? Which event do you not have to pay for? All right, free. Okay, now that seems quite basic. Free. Uh, all right, can we find it? Free, free, free. Where is it? Or possibly complimentary, exactly. Uh, so there may be there may be more than one answer. Aha! Free. There it is. Did you find it? Free all day event. Right. So, uh, all right, they go from the very, very stupidly obvious scanning for uh, scanning for keywords. Also, figuring out what keyword in the third one, which musical event is touring Britain. If you look at Britain, then that's stupid. The whole thing about the whole article is about entertainment in Britain. So you would have to pick another keyword to scan for, like touring. Um, you may have to know some other things. Which events are tragic in content? Uh, personally, I don't know about you, but I've never I've never been to a tragic jazz show. <laughs> I have, however, been to a tragic rock concert. <laughs> it was horrible. It was tragic. The whole band showed up drunk. The whole thing was tragic. Uh, okay, so knowing a little bit about what would be considered a tragedy. Uh, okay, possibly. Um, which would probably be some sort of play or, oh, here, a heartbreaking hostage drama. All right, so there you go. Which what has to do with a tragedy? Okay, you're you're gonna have to, that's much more difficult. I can't even really think of how they're going to paraphrase this or rephrase this. Uh, so I have to kind of scan through and find something that's telling me about something really really sad uh, or doomsday drama. Uh, no, that's different. Ah, now okay, here's a case where it's. Uh, this is a trick, a doomsday drama. It's not necessarily a tragedy. Uh-huh, a little trick there. Anyway, that's another style of how they do CAE. Now I'll show you one more. Let's take a look at one more example of these mix and match things. This, I think this is the hardest type. Um, hang on. Ooh, come on. All right. Here's a here's a totally different type. Uh, okay. Now you're gonna scan a piece of reading. 
uh, are each, in this case, they assign each paragraph of the reading content as A through H, uh, which sections, all right, well, maybe not paragraphs, but sections, refer to which topics. Some sections may be chosen more than once. Okay, notice two, three. Uh, which section refers to the following? Now, here we have entire concepts. Asian attitudes to love and marriage. Experiences at school. The influence of conservatism. Uh, remaining on the outside of society. All right, this is kind of... This is much more tricky. You're not dealing with a keyword title. You're not dealing with a question where it's you get an answer. You're not dealing with just scanning for concrete information. This is much more abstract. Um, uh, okay. So let me just move this a little so we can see it better. Uh, okay, the advantages of Asian customs. All right, now we've got a piece of writing, and each paragraph is paragraph or section is labeled. Um, dear heavens, uh, it's quite long. Okay, so this is going to be taking a lot longer. Uh, in the CAE test, there. Are there's different combinations in part one, part two, part three, part four. Some are longer than others. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall, uh, from what I've read, they're supposed to be 3,500 words in total. So you may end up with a very short piece, and then you may end up with a very long piece in part four, for example. Uh, okay, because you're dealing with abstract concepts here, here is where I would read it or at least skim it and try to, in my own words, uh, in my own words, say what is this really, what is this crazy thing about? Uh, okay, let's, let's try it. Who requires CAE test? Uh, no. Aretheli, uh, Nate Air is asking about who takes the CAE test. I am. <laughs> Aretheli does. Does that answer your question, Nader? <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. I my wow. my in my job, I need to certificate a C one level, so they are accepting. Mm, CAE or IELTS, but uh, I think, I don't know why, but <laughs> I decided to go for CAE instead of IELTS, uh, mainly because uh, CAE has a part of grammar, uh, which scores 20%, and IELTS, it just has four parts, writing, reading, lis uh, listening, and speaking and it's 25 percent each part so I think I'm good at grammar <laughs> so I uh -huh. have to take advantage of it. All right. But, yeah, it's, it's for my job they, they require a C1 English level. That's it. Uh, Nader, usually people take it for their job. I've had a previous student take it because they just wanted to put it on their um, on their resume because uh, giving an official certified level, you know, uh, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Um, they needed that for their resume or they felt they did. And another former student of mine was taking it. He could not get a new position in the company. He was not allowed a promotion unless he had such certification. So he absolutely needed it in order to get a promotion, more money. He, he had no choice. It was a prerequisite to the position. I think this seems to be fairly common. Right, same situation there, Uh Yeah, that's usually the, the idea. All, all right, let's see if we can do this in the next 10 minutes. Maybe a tough one here. Uh, okay, Nema, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
blah, blah, blah. Okay, she's trailing behind her. See, this, all this. Okay, it's the start of a story, and there she is in London. That's really all we really care about. Two reasons for celebration. She's getting married. Um, more importantly, she's coming home after leaving acrimoniously. Uh huh. Do you guys know what that word means? Uh, she was devastated. She was indifferent. Six months ago, she turned up emaciated and shaking. Uh, okay, so I used to think Asians were stupid and boring, but my, when my life went wrong, I felt such a plastic person I had to come back. So she's coming back to her family. What on earth does this have to do with? Asian attitudes to love and marriage? Experiences at school? Well, hmm. Uh, Re-evaluating and accepting Asian re culture. Yeah. Do you like that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clearly, what she has done is reevaluate her place in Asian culture, and she's coming back, so she's accepting. Uh, for example, uh, reevaluate. Yes. Uh, very good. Okay. Well, that one wasn't too bad. Great. We <laughs> got one answer down. A. Great. That wasn't so bad. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, Max. All right. See if, skimming down. How can I read this? Like you? Blah, 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 blah. That, that's how I read it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to kind of give you the no, 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 no. that I'm not really reading okay. it, that I'm eliminating uh, the the extra detail. I know, in fact, I, I try as hard as I can to ignore the extra detail. Uh, you know, I, I don't care what she's buying here, for example. Um, I, I could care less that where she's putting jewels on what parts of her body. That has really nothing to do with the abstract concept. So when I'm doing that, I'm, I know maybe it's, I'm annoying you guys, but I'm trying to give you the impression that I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm ignoring whole sections because they're details I'm not concerned with. Okay, anyway. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Most important are the first... The last paragraph. No. Uh, the last sentence. Well, Asians okay. are rethinking their identity in this country. All right. Well, wait a second. Yes. M most okay. important, uh, there's a lot of detail about how she's going back to her family because they're buying her like lots of jewelry, <laughs> which seems very hedonistic to me. But anyway, the, resor the, res the rewards are plentiful. First sentence, I just want to make a point that the first sentence... Um, and the last sentence, just one example of how Asians are rethinking their identity. Uh, okay. All right, what did you say now? Uh, the advantages. This one. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that, but Romanian. Nothing to do with school or love and marriage or conservatism. On the outside of society, not really. Okay, so you think the advantages of Asian customs? I think that's reasonable. Maybe seven. I think, that, I think that's reasonable. <laughs> Oops, B. So okay, um, maybe seven. All right. So again, as we're taking the test, I'm going to maybe do something like that. I'm going to make notations. If you're not really, really sure, then you should write a question mark because it should become self-evident later uh, as, you're, as you're figuring it out. Um, Is it an arranged marriage? Yeah, but they don't... Okay, just like in IELTS. Okay, Aretheli asks about arranged marriage. It certainly seems that way, yeah. Um, 
a man her parents suggested. Well, that was in part one. Yeah. A anyway. Let's look at another one here. Oh, big paragraph. Oh, okay. Arathelia, what do you think about this one? Mm. Uh, a second and third generation immigrants will readily assimilate. Mm. Mm. Data linked with their heritage and history. <laughs> Period of denial. Uh, I sense a shame of the background. Uh, brave new modern world. Uh, it was. Uh, For me, here's a key word. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Remaining on the outside of society. Let me see. Uh, uh, let, let me. Uh, here's another clue. Um, when you're looking for important concepts, um, blah blah blah. They out. They say a bunch of stuff. If you see this used as a pronoun, this rethinking. Uh, okay, they are somehow going to bolster the point, add another point to it, or in some way reinforce whatever they're talking about. Whenever you see this mm -hmm. sentence structure, this method of writing, this rethinking, somehow, for some reason, it's important because the author sees fit to either um, to, to uh, somehow uh, build his argument or refer back to it in the very least. Obviously, it's a it's a reference clause. So if for some reason, it's got to be important. Um, yes, I think it's the one who has the three paragraphs reevaluating and accepting Asian culture. Reevaluating yeah. and re rethinking. I agree with you. Uh, reevaluating and rethinking are. Are, uh, there are three paragraphs for for this one, so it's going to appear yeah. a lot. Yeah. It would seem so. That. That's right. Yeah, I okay. thought that uh, we had already crossed that, but <laughs> it's true. There are three paragraphs for it. Yeah, we need to cross that bridge three times <laughs> when, <laughs> when we come to it. Three uh, months. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Nader. Okay, ooh, first uh, sentence here. <laughs> In D, we are old-fashioned about marriage. Uh, I I like this. English friends who want to be liked by boys are prisoners of love games. What in the heck is she talking about? I find that very funny. Love games, really. Okay, it's so degrading. Blah, blah, blah. With romance, we have to work up to love. Okay. La-di-da. And Nader thinks uh, that that has to do with marriage. And as it turns out, in fact, attitudes to love and marriage. Yeah, it's one of our concepts. And um, there you go. Uh, okay, so basically, hopefully you guys got an idea of in how this works at CAE. It's a, the mix and match concept thing is presented in different ways in the CAE than it is in IELTS. IELTS, it's straightforward headings questions every time. They don't do it in these other different weird ways, really. Um, they do other mix and match for specific information in IELTS, or they do headings. CAE is kind of a blend of the two. Uh, okay, in any case, um, thank you guys very much. Uh, I have to go, but uh, I'll see you again uh, real soon. And by the way, tomorrow we'll be looking at um, reading section number two. Uh, bye for now. Hope to see you again. Thank you.